Halloween is one of those times of the year which I really like. Not only are there incredibly either good or terrible films out for the year around this time, I also love to try and play some fun games. Susan, a pair, please. Susan, yes. the almighty Susan, please show your presence to us. Um. Oh! Sorry! <laughs> oh! Run to Harvey! Oh no! Rosie's dead! I'm getting out of here! What a successful trip. Yeah, we decorate our homes, but that's as pretty much as far as it goes. And every single point this time of the year rolls around, I think to myself all the time why LEGO doesn't capitalize on it. Yeah, they kinda capitalize on it with the extra poly bags, gift with purchases, and these new pumpkin things which I've seen everywhere, but they never really get into it as much as I'd fully like them to, considering that one of the last full-on spooky sets that we got was probably the haunted house, which I have a massive problem with, more on that later. Before that, let's talk a little bit about what LEGO have done in the past, and that that led me down the road of Monster Fighters. Monster Fighters was kind of like Hidden Side, except it was better in almost every way. Monster Fighters was probably one of the only good spooky themes that LEGO has ever produced. I mean, come on, some of these sets really do capture the essence of Halloween. And even though they're based on more horror type scenarios, I feel like they still found a way to keep it fun and entertaining. Yeah, you've got the big abandoned houses and spooky castles, your classic horror tropes, but you have way more interesting things like the ghost train and vampire hearse. Two sets I feel like do really emphasize the creativity of Lego designers a little bit more than these other ones. Now, Monster Fighters only had one wave, which seems very strange to me. Yeah, I wasn't collecting Lego back in 2012, but when I look back at these sets, I always think to myself, Damn, these are pretty nice looking sets. I don't understand why they wouldn't have sold well at the time. Maybe if any of you guys know, you could let me know why this theme was cancelled in the comment section. But one of the only reasons I can think of off the top of my head of the reasons why it might have been cancelled was that Monster Hunters actually stepped outside of the LEGO boundaries, pushed the boat out a little bit more, and did some things that I really don't think LEGO would do today. Things like putting hearts in jars, and making zombie minifigures which clearly look to have blood on their torsos. I mean, if I'm honest, these are all things that are okay with me, but might not be potentially okay with somebody else. I mean, hell, I'd personally love to see zombies come back as minifigures, and they've done them a few times as CMFs, but bringing back something serious and giving us a lot more variants of zombies would be an incredibly cool set. But unfortunately, I don't really see that happening anytime soon. However, I didn't see a train theme kind of happening anytime soon either, and I voiced my concerns on that, and you guys seem to love it. So I thought I'd share some of my ideas on what I'd want a spooky theme to kind of look like, and hopefully give some love back to the Halloween season. But before I touch on my ideas, I'd love to talk a little bit about what LEGO has done in its recent years because I feel like that underlying status of spooky is still within some of their sets, it's just not done across a whole wave. Which, believe it or not, I actually kind of like, but there are some instances where it works really well and some where it does not. The first set I kind of want to touch on is actually the Stranger Things set. Now, I loved the first two seasons of Stranger Things. Believe it or not, I haven't actually watched the third season yet. But every time me and Miss Bricks walk past this in our local shop, we can't help but stop and admire it for, frankly, its boldness in trying to be such a creepy looking set. The way it's able to flip upside down and show off a frankly creepier version of the set that's on top really does go to show that LEGO can make something that does look truly creepy and movie accurate when they have the right guys on a project. The set practically features the exact same model on the top and bottom just color swap and it's strange and nice to see LEGO introduce these darker tones to not only give more people more variation in colored bricks but also create more colors that are dark and mysterious. LEGO is really, really good for being able to tell stories within dioramas, facial expressions, costumes, the build, it all really helps to tell a cohesive story. And minifig and brick versatility is one of the coolest things, and that's why I always strive for minifigures, because they're a great way of telling stories within your builds. Which is why I'd love to see things like scared facial expressions and other types of monsters come back into a modern spotlight, but not do it in the way that something like Hidden Side did. Now, weirdly, the Hidden side sets were actually pretty damn good. And honestly, if LEGO were to do spooky kind of sets again, I would want them to be similar to the hidden side sets that we had, just without all the phone nonsense. I 100% feel that the LEGO hidden side theme died because of this feature, as well as its box art. 
I actually am quite upset that something like Hidden Side was cancelled after such a short time because of this main downfall. When you were looking at the box on a shelf, you couldn't even tell that this was Lego. Because the front of the box had a massive CGI render on it, I would automatically assume if I was an average customer that this was some form of game that just so happened to include Lego. Something similar to Lego Dimensions. And honestly, if they had just showed a normal picture of the LEGO set on the box like they did with something like Monster Fighters, and had the phone app on there as a almost second thing you can do with this kind of set on the box, I feel like this wave could have sold incredibly well and we could still potentially have things like hidden side sets. I feel like it's something that LEGO tried to do with the recent Haunted House set. As the box art is very clean, showing it off in this nice 18 plus box art with the set prominently on the front and open on the back with a small section on it showing how you can connect the powered up system to automate this model. And I just want to start off by saying, I love this set. I plan to buy this set before it retires, however there are some major issues I have with it, and it's nothing to do with the actual build itself. So for everybody who's about to get mad at me in the comments section for hating on this set, remember that I actually really like it. Now the thing I actually hate about this set, is mainly to do with the story that it portrays. It's actually treated as an amusement park set, which on one side of a coin is very, very good. It's almost a kill two birds in one stone. You can have a creepy haunted house on one side, or you can have a nice amusement park ride on the other. But the fact that it's treated in all of its advertisements as a ride, even down to like the minifigures in the set not necessarily including anything quote unquote creepy, really for me, loses its charm in being treated as an intentional scary build. But you know who never loses their charm? The members that make these videos possible. So a big shout out to Topic Bricks, Abishi, Brighter Switch Bricks, Dustin Martin, Pixel Craftian, Brother From Another Brick, and Ben Willett. Thanks guys for being awesome and supporting the channel, and thank you to all the other members that make these videos possible. If you're considering becoming a member to get your hands on some nice desktop backgrounds that I make for these thumbnails, as well as chill every Friday with me on a Discord call, and not to mention the exclusive content and the behind the scenes look into projects that are coming up, it's the join button next to the subscribe button, which I assume has already been pressed if you're enjoying the content. But back to the argument about the haunted house. The main thing I want to reference in terms of this, which I feel does it much better is the original haunted house ironically from monster fighters the original abandoned haunted house was treated as an abandoned house for all of these monsters to live there were zombies there were vampires there were ghosts even the interior had more things that I would classify as more outlandish than what LEGO would normally do, aka like the heart in the jar situation. And I also feel like this house just sold the abandoned creepy look more than something like the newer style of haunted house. It definitely feels a lot more safe. And that's honestly fine, because I don't think it's trying to do the same job but I would damn love to see LEGO try this set again. And that leads me to my ideas. What would I produce if I was in charge of a new theme? One that was scary, but yet something that LEGO could still probably produce. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... Now, although a title that I don't know if LEGO would actually do, it would also be one that it definitely entices you to the name. And it actually allows the theme to be a lot more broad, meaning that you can make pretty much any sort of creepy thing that you might find in something like a nightmare. Anything from zombies to ghosts. The possibilities are essentially endless with this kind of idea. The first set that I imagine would probably be just a regular suburban house with a ghost hunter's van outside, very similar to something you'd see in something like Phasmophobia. I imagine a set like this that included two minifigures, a man and a woman, both equipped with things like night vision goggles and other brick built ghost hunting equipment equipment that they keep in the back of their van, and it's intended that they're going to this house to hunt the ghost, which you could always use one of the same Ghostbusters pieces from a set like the Ghostbusters Firehouse, something I really do think the ghosts would look more like in this kind of a theme, as you'd be trying to treat it as a 18 plus style theme. I imagine this set fitting in with something like the modular line, but then would have certain features on the model that would allow the minifig to disappear and introduce holographic stickers that could make the ghost appear in mirrors and things like this, similarly to how they do in the current haunted house model, but bringing this set back down to a price point which is a lot more affordable, something like 90 to 150 dollars. My second idea would be something like a zombie school, we've already got a CMF cheerleader, 
that is also a zombie. So really playing into this idea of going to school and all of a sudden your school has been taken over by a zombie apocalypse would be a great nightmare scenario to introduce. Not only could it give you a ton of casual zombie clothing, but it could also introduce a load of zombie minifigures, which I assume would be on the cheaper side being able to reuse prints. I imagine all of the references to certain horror films could be great in sets like this as well. They would obviously have to be very subtle because obviously these sets would also be bought by kids, but I imagine the creators and the designers of this set really going hard into some of the references that only these adults buying these sets and building them would fully understand. I could also see them doing something like apocalypse poly bags or battle packs where they'd introduce things like a wandering traveler and also maybe two or three zombies or a ghost's accessory pack where you can mix and match different parts to create different style ghosts. I think this would also be a really good way of getting more translucent bricks and more light up features in sets that can be a bit more creative. I also think it would allow Lego to open up a bit more into some more mature themes, even if at the end of the day, these sets are going to be primarily designed for children, just in 18 plus boxes. I also don't necessarily see this being a full year theme. I honestly see this being more of a Chinese New Year situation, where we get maybe two or three sets every sort of Halloween season or it being a more October 1st onwards kind of set that's only sold for a few months here and there. I honestly think this would sort the issue with sets not selling throughout the year as they'd only be out around the Halloween months, as well as complaining throughout the year because of the mature themes. It's also a good way of not running out of ideas quite quickly and being able to put more funding into just two, maybe even three sets instead of something like a full nine set wave. This would allow LEGO to try out some more ambitious things like remaking some of their original Monster Fighter sets for this new LEGO Nightmares theme and maybe give us some references to the old builds. Things like a remake of that original Haunted House would be absolutely incredible in my eyes and would look great in something like a Lego City. It could also give us a updated ghost piece which maybe would be transparent and update a lot of the building techniques which I must say for 2013 were still pretty good on the original set. I would also love to see remakes of the Ghost Train and considering at some point I'd love them to introduce a brand new train theme anyway, I think this could be a great crossover of the two themes. But if I'm honest, I'd love to see them introduce a train theme in general and by clicking the screen now, you can see how I'd personally implement that as I show some of my ideas off on what I'd want them to do in a full on train theme. Click the screen. I'll see you in the next one. But weirdly, Monster Hunters... I keep calling it Monster Hunters. I need to, It's Monster Fighters. <laughs>